Hey guys, Tarko Cycle and FPV. We just finished doing the uh, live build on the um, on the new DIY X210 V3 uh, quad, which is sitting uh, right here. You'll see it on my bench here in just a second, right there. All right. And so what we're working on now is <clears throat> what I'm working on now is showing you guys how to do the software portion of this. Uh, and I uh, I'm gonna get a few things set up here. So bear with me real quick. So first thing is I've grabbed my radio here because I know we're gonna be using it in just a little bit, but prior to that, um, we need to go ahead and flash the soft, flash the firmware on the, on the um, uh, flight controller. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do the following here. Here you go. So we're gonna watch this and we're gonna watch beta flights, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is with the power off. Now I'm using a DC, AC to DC converter instead of a LiPo, but either case it's off. And even though it's off, you will see, and if I show you, you will see the, channel selector indicator. Let me see if I can get an angle on You see that number two right there? So right there, right? So you'll see that on, right? That doesn't mean the VTX is on, it's just lit up when there's no power, okay? Um, the other thing I'm gonna show you is right, right here, there's this little white switch. And if you push that switch to the right, okay, like towards motor one, it turns off the VTX when the LiPo is attached. So while we're doing a lot of this work and the, and the, we're doing the updating of the ESCs and stuff, we're going to turn the VTX off so we don't overheat it, okay? So it's pretty simple stuff, pretty cool feature. I like that they did. It's been removed on the F4 V6. It's kind of disappointing, but on the F3 V4, I really did like it. All right, so anyways, let's get going. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to zoom out here so we can see everything. All right, there we go. Okay, and we're going to go ahead, and what we do know about this firmware is that we're running Spracing F3. So um, uh, I'm going to wait for this to populate here real quick. It's going to take just a second. There it is, Spracing F3. And we're going to go ahead and go to the newest build, which is going to be uh, uh, 4.0.6, okay? We're going to do a full chip erase, and we're going to say load the firmware online. Or, yeah, and then, and then we're going to flash it. Now, it's going to take a minute. It's a little slow. Um, in the meantime, uh, with the transmitter, now I've already set this up, but I'm just going to go over this with you since, since we got to do something anyway while this thing is loading, Welcome right? So let TX. me just... Um, let me do this here real quick. All right, okay, so what we've got here is um, I've created the model. It's the Cyclone FPV X210, right? And when we go into our properties here, one of the first things we need to do is we need to make sure that we set it for internal RF and set it to XJT, XJT D8, okay? We are using the D8, and you know what? I'll give you a, um, let me do it this way. This will be better for you guys, I think. So the XJT D8, all right, and then we're gonna use our binding to bind to it, and that'll be, that'll be how that works. On the beta flight side, this is going to be UART 3, all right? So we're going to set it up for UART 3 SBUS so that you know how that works. Um, and then uh, outside of that, that's pretty much it. I have reloaded this entire uh, radio. So all my, um, because I had like 40 drone models on here, uh, I needed to kind of stay more focused on what the heck I'm doing. So I've started putting all the new ones on and I'm deleting all the old ones. And if I have to go back, I'll add them. But what the point of me saying that is, is a lot of my stuff is not configured anymore properly. So if you look at like, um, uh, well, you'll see the way it's interpreted here. And all right, so I tell you what, let me not waste any more time. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second, but let's do this first. Let's get back to what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna get exit here. Okay, so we've done, we've now loaded our firmware, so we're gonna go ahead and connect, all right? And the first thing we wanna do, and I'm not gonna worry about this thing not being leveled right now because it is sitting kind of whoppy down on here. First thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and turn on UART3 uh, Serial RX, so let's go ahead and save. All right, once that's saved, we're gonna go to our configuration, and even though, even though the um, <clears throat> Emacs says that this is multi-shot ready, there has been issues with multi-shot and this ESC, so we're gonna just use one shot 125, which is what I'm used to using anyway. And you're gonna set your um, throttle here. I set it to 1070. Uh, it's always worked for me. Everything else looks good. We are gonna go ahead and notice something here. You see how at the bottom here, your CPU load is at 23%, right? So we're gonna change a couple things because we don't need to have that there anyway. Uh, we're gonna drop out our gyro update to two kilohertz. We're gonna take off barometer and magnetometer. I am gonna go ahead and name this quad. <clears throat> and I will name it, um, let's see, CFPV-X210. Uh, V3, okay? And that's the name of the quad. And I will change the input here to serial base and make sure it says S bus. I will turn off the RSSI feature here. Uh, I will remove telemetry, air mode. I will make those all options to select, anti gravity is off. And now we're gonna save and watch our CPU load now, watch. Boom. We're gonna be at around 10 to 12%. 
All right, I'm very happy with that. I have no problems with it. And honestly, we're not losing any features really. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep dynamic on at this point. All right, um, okay, so that being said, the next thing we wanna do is, now that we've got everything set, we wanna go ahead and turn this on and we want to, um, we want to uh, set our firmware, okay? Um, so I'm gonna disconnect here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire up my, um, uh, sorry, DC to AC, AC to DC converter. Open um, uh, BL Heli Suite, and I'm gonna tell it to go ahead and connect and read the setup. Okay, now I have done this already, so I'm gonna tell you that since I have already done the, um, well, you know what, I'll just do it again anyway, it doesn't matter. But at this point, make sure to turn off your VTX, okay? Flip that switch to the right. That way your VTX doesn't get hot, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Flash BL Heli, and we're gonna use the Emacs Lightning 20 amp multi, and that's fine, even though it's a 30 amp PSC, and I get that, it uses the same firmware as a 20 amp. So let's go ahead and click okay, click yes. And we're gonna go ahead and let it write, okay? And I do need to show you this, so we're gonna go ahead and go through these steps again. It won't take very long, it's probably about an extra uh, five minutes and 40 seconds. Something like that. All right, so we're gonna save that one, go to, go to motor two, or ESC two, here we go. I'm really excited about this build, guys. I mean, uh, the more I've invested, I mean, I've, I've probably put about an extra $7,000 in frames in the last two weeks, right? So I'm not only investing in making mine uh, better, bigger, and, you know, more powerful, uh, or stronger, that is, um, but I am also investing in companies that I know are making good frames that are willing to supply them at a good price so I can pass the discounts to my customers. Part of that is dealing with companies directly in China now and not having a wholesaler or you know do like that i'm actually uh we actually have feet on the ground over there now that represent us and um we should be opening an office small one but an office nonetheless so that we can uh go out there and physically put our hands on the product and test it out make sure it's good before we bring it in so in that area i'm working to bring things to you guys that are going to be more affordable um without compromising on the quality all right uh, so let's do this here we go all right Okay, so now we flashed everything, right? So it's all done. One thing we do want to do though is make sure to put a check mark here. Now that usually is, I removed it because I've already done this step uh, before, but I'm going to put it back right now and then I'm going to tell it to write. I want it to go to all of them the same way, okay? So we're going to click okay. All right, now our firmware is done. Now we need to go back and calibrate. So we're going to click disconnect, okay? Now here's something I want you to do and I want you to get used to doing it. I want you to disconnect the power. I want you to turn the power off on your quad, all right? And you'll understand why later on, but for right now, just trust me and do this, okay? Make sure to disconnect your LiPo before you go back to beta flight. Now, in this case, we're gonna connect, keep your LiPo off, reset, calibrate just because it's out of habit. I'm gonna go to motors here, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the motor on right here, the arming notice, uh, the toggle here. I'm gonna crank the master, whoops. I'm gonna crank the master toggle all the way up, right? Now listen for the tones. Okay, that's our calibration and it's done. The motors will spin very smooth. Okay, and there you go. Now, I will tell you this. If your mo and what you wanna do, get in the habit of spinning each motor one at a time. Now, I will tell you that by default, these motors were all spinning counterclockwise and I went back into BL Heli and I changed that and I'll show you what I did. Okay, right now they're all configured properly. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna now disconnect, go back to BL Heli Click read setup, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna see my min and max right here. So what we have is we have uh, throttle min. So motor one is 116 or 1016, two is 1016, three is 1016, and four is 1016. But motor max uh, is uh, 2012. And um, it is, uh, sorry, 1996, uh, 2008 and 2000. So what we do know is that we have to adjust this to the lowest this, the minimum throttle goes to the highest and the maximum throttle goes to the lowest, right? And what that means is the motor that can, the, 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 on the minimum throttle, um, there's a motor that can, the highest, how do you word this? You, you have to bring all the minimum throttles up to the highest uh, number, highest value from a motor because that motor cannot go any lower, but all the motors can go higher. So you bring them to meet that. On the maximum, you bring it down to meet the slowest one because that slowest one cannot go as high as the rest, but the other ones can go slow. 
So you bring everything to a nice, comfortable point. So the lowest rating is gonna be the highest low rating, and the highest rating is gonna be the lowest high rating. Just go with me, right? So 1016 is across the board fine, but on here we had, I believe, 1996. Yeah, we did. So now what happens is they all go, so we just select them all, left click on all of them, and drop it down to 1996, and remove programming now because we're done programming. We don't wanna do it again. So we're gonna remove that and we're gonna right set. Okay, now if you right click on each motor, you're gonna see 1016, 1996, and you're gonna see programming is off. Now, the only other thing is if you have not set your reversed yet, I can tell you that motor one and uh, motor, well, I didn't know they all had to be reversed, but I, uh, uh, hold on, I don't think that's right. So motor two is normal and motor three is normal. They spun counterclockwise. Motor four and motor one had to be reversed because they were also spinning counterclockwise. So if yours are spinning the wrong direction, just come over here, change this, and then click right to set up, okay? So now that I'm done, I'm gonna click disconnect. Don't forget, make sure to un make sure to power off your quad, okay? All right, now, you're gonna come over to your uh, beta flight, connect. Now, we're at the point now where we wanna go ahead and bind our radio. Now, um, one thing we wanna do is, okay, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go to our, like I said here, our, we're gonna set the XJTD8. I don't know if you can see that, but let me just make sure you can. Uh, you see where it says XJTD8? Okay, good. So that's it right there. Hopefully you can see that. Let me zoom back out. Okay. And, um, and uh, we are gonna go to our bind and we're gonna hit okay, make it start chirping. Then we're gonna come over here and we're going to press on our, uh, our button here. All right, and when we do that, we're also going to power it up. And you're gonna see the blue light here, and then you're gonna see it disappear. When that blue light turns off, it means it's bound. You can hit your enter button now, hit exit, exit, go to the top. You see how it's blinking right there? Once we turn it off, then we turn it back on, you're gonna see a blue light. That means we're bound, all right? So you got a, you got a solid blue light here. That means we're bound to the radio. And if you go to your receiver tab, and I need to set mine to T-A-E-R, okay, and click save, boom, I'm good. I got my switches, Normal. No, okay, not. everything's okay, working, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my low threshold to 1005. That means that if my sticks are above 1005, my quad won't arm. Okay, I'm gonna set my high threshold to 2000. Whether it, they say it's necessary or not, I do it anyway. And I'm gonna click save. Now, as you can see here, and if you look in my, if you look on the radio itself, when I go to my um, outputs, uh, we do not see what the radio sees and what I'm seeing are two different things. Beta flight is reading um, 1517, and I'm not. I'm reading, as you can see right here, I'm reading. Uh, well, in my middle, I'm reading 1500. So we definitely have something wrong here, especially with the throttle too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on my throttle, I'm gonna edit it, and I'm gonna take it all the way down. So I'm gonna go to my minimum, and I'm just gonna drop it down until beta flight shows 1000, because at this point, uh, and I guess it's not going to do that, so never mind. Let me click exit, and we'll do this another way. I also did change this, and I thought I would like this, but I don't like it at all. Um, this is one of the features, um, uh, with the new um, OpenTX, where I get to get the um, uh, different readings instead of the percentages, and I hate this. I thought I would like it, I really did, but I don't. So, um, but let me just go ahead and uh, edit this anyway. Uh, and let me go back and put this back where it was, because I want it to be, there we go. All right, so uh, as it stands right now, my, rate, my readings are off on here, and I'm gonna try to figure out why. I, I'm not really sure why it's so off, because on the rest of the quads it's not. But um, I'll see, there must be something here that I'm gonna set, I need to change. Okay, but other than that, we're gonna go to my modes now, and we're gonna set my modes. So I'm gonna use my three-way switch right here for my modes. So I'm gonna click add range, I'm gonna flip my switch. Now the reason I use a three-way switch is because I wanna stretch this line to here, and basically I flip it all the way down. That means I'm gonna be armed. If I accidentally bump this, at least I'm still in arm status. That's why I don't use a two-way switch, right? Because I've accidentally hit it before. So I keep it this way, and that way I've got one more chance before I cut the throttle by doing that, right? Now I'm gonna go to my horizon, and I'm gonna add a range, and I'm gonna flip the three-way switch here. And the reason I use a three-way switch here, I'm gonna drag this all the way. This means when I'm here, I'm in horizon mode, which my radio says is normal mode, okay? The reason I use a three-way switch is because I don't always fly air mode. 
I fly acro, but I don't always fly air, and there's reasons for that. I have my reasons for when I'm testing. I don't want air mode on. Um, for my failsafe, I'm going to add a range. I'm going to use another three-way switch, and there it is, and I'm going to move my failsafe all the way to the end. This way, if I accidentally flip it to the middle, I don't kick my quad in the failsafe, okay? I will put my beeper, though, on the same switch in the middle. So what I'll do now is I'll say, okay, and it's automatically on failsafe, but I do this anyway. What I'm going to say now is anytime I'm in middle, send my beeper. Anytime I'm in all the way, put failsafe and beeper, and if I'm not, just turn it off. All right, and then the other thing is I want air mode. So in air mode, I'm going to add a range, acro, and I'm going to put it in the acro, middle. Okay, so what, now this thing says acro mode twice. I wish it said acro, agro, air, and then horizon, but it doesn't. I don't have the audio. Acro, so what this is basically saying is when my switch is up in position one, um, I am in acro. Position two acro, is fun. acro with air, and position three Normal. will be horizon. No, okay, acro, no, um, and that pretty much sums it up for now. I do not have anything else usually set here, so I'm going to click save. And that will then get me down to here where I can now flip the switch. And what you're seeing, what you're hearing is my quad saying that I am not within my range, right? So I'm going to go here. And it's saying that I'm not within my range here. And I still have to figure out why this is happening. I am not used to seeing this and it's not on my receiver. So it's something definitely with whatever I've done with the firmware. Or, or something that affects, and I'm sure there's a way for me to go ahead and edit in here. I just I don't know it right now, off the top of my head. But I will come back to that if we need to, and I'll, I'll add it to the video. Um, okay, outside of that, now if I want to arm it, all I have to do is increase this to 1050, and that's why um, a lot of places will keep it higher, right? Because if I do that, and I go to my motors, okay, and I do this, right? Now my motors will spin, okay? Because I said, look, I know you're above my threshold, but I'm just gonna increase my threshold, okay? And we're gonna be good like that. Now I'm gonna turn this off, disarm it, go to my receiver again. And the only thing I want you to see is at this rating, my quad is gonna be spinning out of control. Okay, so I've gotta definitely figure out why it's happening. I just, off the top of my head right now, maybe I'm tired, I'm not realizing it, uh, but I will, like I said, I'll find out and I'll post it. Okay, so we have our arm. Right, which I, actually we have to be, if we're plugged into beta flight, we have to go ahead and tell it to arm. So we have that, uh, and that's working. Uh, we have our buzzer, hear that going? Uh, we have our, our modes set, okay? And if you want to test the failsafe, I can flip this to failsafe. Oh, hey brother! Sorry, that's UPS, whoops, hold on. So we're back now, right? And uh, I did go back on notes and I did try to figure out here what was the problem. And I did notice that the one thing that I had missed uh, that I had forgotten just because it's very rarely loose, used is the uh, RX range, CLI command RX range. So we're looking at this right now and we know that in my radio, I really am spot on with pretty much all the controllers that it shows that I'm at 1000 and uh, 2000. Sorry, I meant to, I'm sitting here looking at the camera like you guys can see me. And you can't. So, okay, so anyways, getting back to this, there is a command called RX range, and it's in my notes. So I totally forgot because, again, it's been very rarely used uh, with all the new transmitters that are out and receivers that are out, but it is there for this purpose. When you have a range that is so far out from being able to be adjusted in your radio, uh, you can actually push it through in clean flight or beta flight. Well, beta flight, okay? So here's what happens. What you do is you look at your range that's on here. We know that the range on throttle is 1020. If you look at there on the screen in here, I'll actually do it like this. You guys don't need to see my ugly face right now. So let's just do it like this. Right, one, two. Okay, now look. So you see there it's 1020 and I'm at low. And if I go all the way up, it's 2015. That's pretty much what it's gonna be for everything. 1020 and 2015, okay? So if you look at that, okay. Which means that it's not the radio anymore. Now this is just a setting within Betaflight and something going on between Betaflight, the receiver, and the controller. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tell it that if the quad, if the range is at 1020, understand it to be 1000. And if the range is at 2015, understand it to be 2000. To do that, we go into the CLI and we type the following. RX range, sorry, RX range, and then we use zero through three, right? So zero means auxiliary one and three is four, whatever. So you got channels one, two, three, and four. So it's zero, one, two, and three on the computer side, right? So RX range zero, and then you put your total. So it was 1020 and 2015, right? Now you're gonna repeat this so you can, well, actually you just hit enter 
and then push the up arrow and change this to um, RX range one for uh, uh, channel two, and then push the up arrow, oops, and then go back and do uh, channel two for whatever, for three, and then push up and do backspace in three for channel four, and then type save. Now watch what happens when we log back in. Okay, we're gonna go back to receiver, and lo and behold, look at my look at my rates here. Boom, that is exactly what I want, okay? It is now telling it that if you're reading these rates, uh, if I go all the way down, and I go all the way up, go down, go up, okay? So it's giving it the uh, ability to interpret that its minimum was reading wrong, and it should be that the minimum is at 1,000, even though it said 1020. That's not something that's in our radio. Now we can fine tune it if we want to, but there's really no need to. These, these are very accurate. Now on my roll, I do see that it does look like one point off on the sub trim, so I can go to my radio, hit roll, hit edit, go to sub trim, turn it down one, and bam. All right, I'm perfect there. All right, so look at my, the, all the values are now perfect. If you look at the quad here on the picture, it's not spinning out of control. And now if I want to go to my uh, motors tab, I can arm it. Whoops, sorry. No, I have to arm it first. But there you go. I don't have to adjust any of the values. I'm perfect there. Okay, so we're set. So we are really ready to start flying now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, turn this off. I'm going to go ahead and get everything ready. Uh, let me get the props. I do only have two screws in there. Hold on one second. So I'm gonna level it. There's a beep. There we go. There it goes. And oh you guys can't see that, sorry, I forgot. So let me just kind of keep it here. And on our hovering, I think it's extremely stable. Alright. Got power. Definitely has power, okay? So, uh, do some tuning. Tuning wouldn't hurt. But outside of that, this sucker's good to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it down now. And there we go. Alright. Let me go grab it real quick and see if any of the motors are hot. Oh no, everything's perfect. Alright, so that's excellent. So let me go ahead now and flip the screen back here real quick. And let's see, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go here, go here. And you guys can now see what I usually work on here. All right, so that's pretty much about it, guys. I hope that really helps you guys out. Um, the quad is awesome. I did I did use a 5S on this test flight, but again, the 5S was pretty low in in, in, uh, in charge. So uh, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and that's it. It's uh, a heck of a quad. Hope you guys enjoy. I only got, like I said, I only got about nine of them left. So um, feel free to grab one if you want, okay? Until next time, guys, God bless. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me get this out of my way, please. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will put the, um, the instructions and the uh, firmware and the, um, the, uh, the dump file and everything on the website, okay? Uh, other than that, let me see what I'm going to do here. Okay, so yeah, make sure, please, to subscribe to us on YouTube right there. Uh, support me, if you could, please. Um, and then, uh, is that right? Follow me. Follow me on Facebook, I think. Yeah, and then email me, targetcyclonfbu.com. And back to my ending, which is God bless, safe flying, spend time with your family. You never know how much time you're going to have with them. And uh, that's it, guys. Appreciate you all very much. See you later. Bye.